We have reached the final four. Buffalo, Kansas City, Tampa Bay, and Green Bay. Which teams will win in advance to Super Bowl 55? We'll be previewing each conference championship game of the NFL playoffs, as well as updating you on some news around the NFL on a brand new episode of T2F. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys for joining us on this Thursday. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of this show, Time to Football. We appreciate you guys joining us for our podcast every single week. We premiere this on YouTube every Thursday night. If you have an opportunity to join us in the live chat, interact with us. As we are premiering the show, chat with us. Let's talk about football. Let's just hang out, talk about who you guys think is going to win every single championship game. The conference championship already so far in this season. It's hard to believe that the season's already progressed uh, this far. It seemed like at the beginning of August, there was some doubt whether or not this season would even happen. Um, and then, you know, we, uh, through protocols taken with COVID-19 and uh, apparently COVID-19 advancing and, and going on longer than November, I thought it was going to end after the election, but uh, it didn't. And so this season has been going on and we are close to Super Bowl 55 down in Tampa. Speaking of which, uh, the protocols have changed because of COVID-19 Usually every single year, we travel down to the Super Bowl for media day or opening night, what they like to call it now, and we interview all the players uh, prior to the Super Bowl. Well, this year, everything's going to be virtual, and I'm still working with the NFL, like emailing them back and forth, trying to see if we can get our name in there for virtual interviews. It's going to be a lot tougher this year to try to get a spot. Uh, So there's no guarantee we can get some interviews this year for the Super Bowl. We may, we may not. Um, And so with that being said, we may have to... Just uh, delay a podcast for next week and just come out with a a podcast for Super Bowl week because we may have some interviews with some players playing in the Super Bowl. Some great teams competing for that Super Bowl spot as well. But like I was saying, we're going to get into all of that. YouTube, if you guys are premiering this, thank you guys so much for joining us on iTunes as well. If you guys are listening to us on the audio experience, head over to YouTube, youtube.com slash time to football. We come out with much more content on our YouTube channel. We're going to get into NFL news prior to the uh, conference championship, but before we get into that, you know what we have to do every single week. We have to give the most prestigious award for the week, the Hungriest Player of the Week. Hungriest Player of the Week, the one that wanted it the most. Usually, whenever a victory in the NFL happens, a lot of people like to give credit to the quarterback position especially with Tom Brady, because Tom Brady, he's the GOAT, greatest of all time. He's been doing it for a very, very long time, and much deservingly so, he helped his team to a great victory against the New Orleans Saints. But instead, on that team, we want to give it to a lesser-known guy. He's well-known as as far as the NFL community, if you're a big NFL fan, especially a Tampa Bay fan, a very good player, but doesn't get as much credit for this victory than maybe someone like the quarterback would. Devin White, the linebacker for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the New Orleans Saints, had 11 tackles and an interception. It would have been two interceptions if one of them did not get called back because of a penalty. But 11 tackles and an interception, and he really engineered a great performance to help that defense uh, to a victory against the New Orleans Saints and advancing them to the NFC Championship. Has been delivering for the last couple of years, and especially in that big win and that big moment against the New Orleans Saints. And that is why Devin White is the hungriest player of the week. Cool note, in fact, about Devin White, he has missed zero snaps this NFL season. As a matter of fact, we actually saw that uh, the check down, gosh, the check down, stealing my hungriest player of the week award. But we saw that they posted that cool stat that he missed zero snaps this season. And then Devin White commented uh, down below and he said, only thing stopped me was that bit at COVID, and it still couldn't stop me. So Devin White even acknowledges that he missed zero snaps and nothing could get in his way, even COVID-19. So Devin White, freak of nature, and a great player for years to come. NFL news and notes around the league going into the conference championship game. Biggest news, in my eyes, I believe, is that Phillip Rivers, the quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts for the past season, and then 16 years prior to that for the L.A. Chargers, has retired. 
was drafted in 2004 by the New York Giants, was traded the same day to the uh, San Diego Chargers, and had a great Pro Bowl, maybe even Hall of Fame-worthy career uh, to boot on top of that. So Phillip Rivers, kind of sentimental for me because I grew up watching football. The first season I ever watched was in 2006. Phillip Rivers was one of those quarterbacks that I watched when he was playing in San Diego and had that 14-2 season with LaDainian Tomlinson being the MVP. was one, in, one of the very first quarterbacks that I ever watched play. Uh, so, Philip Rivers, thanks for the memories. Enjoy your retirement with your nine kids. Uh, some head coaching hires around the NFL. The Lions have hired Dan Campbell, the New Orleans Saints assistant head coach, also tight ends coach, has been hired by the Detroit Lions. And I just saw the greatest press conference in the world by Dan Campbell, who people are now calling Dan Cannibal because of his words and what he said in that press conference. If you haven't had an opportunity to watch it, go watch it. He talks about uh, really brings some intensity and aggression to that Lions organization. He calls himself the dude. I don't know why that is. But Dan Campbell was talking about uh, biting off kneecaps. You knock him down, he's going to bite off a kneecap. You knock him down again, he's going to bite off the other kneecap. I don't know. It was crazy. It got me fired up. So I'm excited for the Lions and Dan Campbell to be the head coach. The Atlanta Falcons have hired Arthur Smith, the Tennessee Titans offensive coordinator, to be their head coach. Uh, some believe that the Falcons were honing in on Arthur Smith or, or Joe Brady they decided to go down the route of Arthur Smith. So let's see what he can bring to that offense. The New York Jets, Robert Sala, the head coach uh, of the New York Jets, formerly the defensive coordinator of the San Francisco 49ers. Sala is now going to be leading the charge for the Jets, and let's see what they do with that number two overall pick. The L.A. Chargers, this was kind of a bit of a surprise just because of the uh, head coaching candidates or people that were interviewing for those head coach vacancy spots. You didn't really hear Brandon Staley's name a lot, the defensive coordinator for the Rams. He did interview for a couple of positions. He interviewed for the Philadelphia Eagles as well. And now the L.A. Chargers decided to hire him. It was between uh, Staley, maybe even Urban Meyer, but then Urban Meyer went to the Jaguars. Brian Dable as well, the offensive coordinator of the Bills, who decided to stay put with the Bills. So Staley is now the head man down in L.A. for the Chargers. Sticking in L.A. from the Rams to the Chargers, which is actually pretty cool. This is just in. By the time that you guys are watching this, we just learned this information probably about 30 minutes ago. The Philadelphia Eagles have a new head coach. They interviewed a lot of people. Kellen Moore, Robert Sala as well, Eric Bieniemy. Uh, Josh McDaniels, which was actually a favorite for the Eagles, but so was Nick Sirianni. The Colts offensive coordinator was one of the favorites as well. A lot of the players, the Philadelphia Eagles players texted uh, Howie Roseman and, and Jeffrey Lurie and said, listen, get Deuce Staley, the running backs coach who played in the NFL, is a player's coach, has been with the Eagles staff for a very long time. Let's get him as a head coach. A lot of the players would, would have loved that. Instead, they decided to go down the route of Sirianni, so let's see what he can do for the Eagles. <clears throat> some releases in the NFL. Some players have been cut by the Baltimore Ravens, a couple of them. Mark Ingram, end of an era for Mark Ingram in Baltimore, as well as Robert Griffin III has been cut by the Baltimore Ravens. The Seattle Seahawks, if we want to uh, stay on the topic of head coaching vacancies or offensive coordinator vacancies, they are in need of an offensive coordinator, and they have interviewed... Adam Gase. Oh, man. Here we go again. You know what's crazy is that Jamal Adams was traded from the Jets to the Seahawks because of the strained relationship with Adam Gase. And now you bring in Adam Gase <laughs> as the offensive coordinator, and Jamal Adams is going to probably request another trade out of Seattle. So, But they're interested in Adam Gase. It might be better to go down another route, such as Doug Peterson who they have also shown interest for as offensive coordinator of the Seattle Seahawks after they got rid of Schottenheimer. After the lackluster year that the Seahawks had, great first half of the season, then second half, not so much. Looking for an offensive coordinator, so Gase and Peterson are their top two candidates. P prior to the NFC Championship game, Vita Vea, the defensive tackle, the first-round defensive tackle that they drafted a couple years back, is now going to be activated and is eligible to be playing this Sunday against the Green Bay Packers, a very, very good addition to that defensive line. Here's a little bit of a, of drama and some tea for you. Goff and McVay, Jared Goff and Sean McVay, have a strained relationship according to multiple sources. It's mainly people are, are saying that this is due to Jared Goff not being the committed starter 
for the LA Rams in 2021. This is according to Sean McVay, who didn't come out and say that Goff is the starter. He has his back and forth uh, mentality and, and is not committed on him. So let's see if McVay is going to lean in on Goff. But it, from reports, it seems like, yes, it's a strained relationship between the head coach and the quarterback, but it's something that can be resolved and they can move on from that. Justin Fields has officially declared for the NFL draft here in in April 2021. So we've already got Trevor Lawrence declaring. Mac Jones has declared as well. Justin Fields has also declared. uh, People expect those to be the top three quarterbacks taken. Justin Fields, probably the number two prospect in the quarterback position. It's between the Jets. It's maybe even the Panthers or the Falcons. A lot of teams are eligible to draft Justin Fields. Let's see where that Ohio State quarterback lands in the NFL. I mean, Ohio State quarterbacks don't really tend to do well in the NFL, but maybe Justin Fields can break the mold. Speaking of quarterbacks, Dwayne Haskins. This is information that we actually just learned about an hour ago. Dwayne Haskins has officially signed a one-year contract with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Came in for a workout a couple weeks ago with the Carolina Panthers and just visited with the Pittsburgh Steelers this morning. They liked what they saw, so they offered him a one-year contract to be uh, a quarterback in Pittsburgh. And then finally, let's end the NFL news with some encouraging news. As far as the uh, New York Giants goes, the Giants are or have complete confidence in Daniel Jones as the starter in 2021. There's no need to look for another quarterback. There's no need for any trades, free agent signings. Daniel Jones, according to the head brass in New York, has the complete confidence and will be the starter in New York. So take that however you want, whether you're a Daniel Jones fan or not. But those are your uh, NFL news and notes going into the conference championship. Let's move on to the game previews. What to expect with each game happening this Sunday. Come down to the Final Four. These two teams are going to face in the AFC and then two two more teams in in the NFC to determine who goes on to the Super Bowl. Let's start off with the AFC Championship. The AFC Championship will be between the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs. This is a rematch of their matchup a few months ago, where the Chiefs won 26-17. The Bills make their first AFC Championship appearance in almost 30 years, while the Chiefs will be playing in this game for the third straight season. The Bills have looked impressive in the playoffs. They defeated the Colts. They defeated the Ravens. But if you watch that game, each game, all the way through, with the Buffalo Bills facing the Colts and then the Ravens. You could argue that maybe it was just two, three, four, five plays that determined the outcome of that game. It was very close. The Colts seemed like that they were in position to win that game if it weren't for some mishaps on the coaching side of the ball with Frank Reich, who admitted his mistakes. If they didn't go for it on fourth down and instead settled for a field goal, they may have tied the game, and the Buffalo Bills would have been in danger of losing that game. And then again, with the Baltimore Ravens, you may look at that score and say, okay, 17-3, to yeah, the Bills beat them by more than one possession. What's the big deal with that? That's not close at all. But you watch that game, and you see that there were two or three plays that really determined the, the, the outcome of that game. I mean, two missed field goals in that windy environment in Buffalo which is no excuse. You have to adapt to your environment. But it came down to a few plays. Two missed field goals by Justin Tucker, one of the most accurate kickers, the accurate kicker, uh, the most accurate kicker in the NFL. And then also when uh, Huntley came in in replace of Lamar Jackson, who was under concussion protocol, he threw an overthrown pass on fourth down, which would have been a touchdown and would have made it 10-17 to at least, uh, overshot Marquise Brown by just a bit. Also, Lamar Jackson getting hurt as well. That determined the outcome as well. So the Bills, yeah, impressive. Good victories by the Colts or against the Colts and the Ravens. But the fact that they were just so close and was determined by just a few plays, it makes you wonder. They're impressive, but they look beatable. And against a team like the Kansas City Chiefs, who's been looking great all season long, Patrick Mahomes has been a full participant in practice. So that concussion that we all fear that he might miss some time. Don't have to worry about it. Patrick Holmes is on track to play against a stellar team in the Kansas City Chiefs. 
it's hard to say if the Bills are a lock to win this game. It's going to be competitive, and they definitely have a good shot. But let's see what happens between the Bills and the Chiefs. Talking about the Chiefs and their side of the ball. They survived without Patrick Mahomes with some heroic play by Chad Henney, a veteran that's been bouncing around from team to team, came in with the Miami Dolphins, replaced Chad Pennington, then was going around to more multiple teams, had a stint with the Jacksonville Jaguars as well, came into Kansas City, and that is now their backup, had probably one of the better plays of his, his whole entire career. Uh, just on fourth down, throwing that pass to Tyreek Hill and converting to lock up that game. Also running for the ball on third and 12 and getting close and making it a fourth and one. Chad Henney, the Chiefs, were able to survive with Chad Henney. But that game was kind of out of hand if you were just looking at the first half and the score there, 19-3. to All of a sudden, in the second half, all you do is just score a field goal and you let the Browns continue to come back to make this game even more close than it should be. Obviously, the Chiefs won 22-17, to and it's a good job by them. But if you want to talk about the Bills, and you want to talk about the Chiefs, and how all of these games that they had in the playoffs so far were determined by just two, three, four plays, it could be anyone's game this Sunday. Any of these teams, it's proven in the playoffs so far, they're beatable. So it just comes down to which team is better statistically. And let's go ahead and break that down by looking at the uh, rankings for each team for the 2020 season. Talking about team rankings, let's start off with pass offense, the Bills. Third in the NFL for the Chiefs, first. Both pass-heavy teams. Compare that to the rush offense, 20th in the NFL for the Bills, 16th for the Chiefs. Look at the Bills. That's kind of skewed because that's mainly Josh Allen. The running backs, Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, haven't really contributed that much this season for the Buffalo Bills. And as a matter of fact, Zach Moss is now placed on IR. So this team is extremely pass heavy as of right now. For the Chiefs, they're just going to rely on Daryl Williams and Le'Veon Bell until Clyde edwards helaire can get healthy. But instead, even so, they don't really run the ball that much. It's a pass heavy offense. Points per game, third in the NFL for the Bills, fifth for Kansas City. Both high-scoring teams. Pass defense, if you want to talk about their defense. The Bills, 13th. The Chiefs, 14th, right around the same area. As far as rush defense, kind of, sort of, right around the same as well. 17th and rush defense for the Bills. And then Chiefs, 21st as well. What we can gather from this and the information that we can get is that both of these teams are very, very similar as far as statistics go and their rankings go. Pass-heavy offenses and their rush offense does not matter that much. And defense, right around the same rankings as well. Defensively, very, very similar as far as their pass defense and their rush defense as well. This could be a model that most NFL teams could follow in the future if you want your team to get far into the Final Four. Find a good quarterback, make it a pass-heavy offense, have great receivers as well, and it doesn't really matter what your run game may look like. Actually, as a matter of fact, if you want to talk about a pass-heavy team where it doesn't really matter how your run offense looks like and you get pretty far, another great example of that could be the Pittsburgh Steelers, who made the NFL postseason as well. So this could be a model that most NFL teams could follow in the future, you have to have a very good quarterback to pass the ball a lot. Speaking of quarterbacks, let's take a look at the quarterback position and the comparison between these two very good Pro Bowl quarterbacks this season, Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. Talking about passing yards, right around the same, 4,500 yards for, for Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, 4,700 yards passing. Listen, all these stats for Mahomes, by the way, this is through 15 games. He sat out week 16 or week 17, the 16th game of the season. Chad Henney started to give Patrick Mahomes some rest. Pass touchdowns right around the same as well. 37 for Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, 38. Interceptions. Allen has been a little bit more turnover uh, friendly, if you want to call it that. But I mean, 10 interceptions is not that bad at all. Patrick Mahomes a little bit more careful with the ball. Six interceptions. Completion percentage. This is what's been doing so well or what has been the greatest asset for Josh Allen and his growth going into his third year in the NFL. Josh Allen has completed 69 nice percent of his passes as far as Patrick Mahomes 66.3 and then rating right around the same as well 107.2 and then 108.2 for Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes respectively. So again statistically speaking very very similar two teams 
that are statistically very similar as far as how they run their offense and their defense, and very similar as far as their quarterbacks go statistically. This is going to be a battle of two teams that look very, very much alike, but one's got to give. And as we mentioned at the top of this preview, each of these teams, if you want to count all the playoff games that they've played so far, have looked beatable. They've looked great, but they can be beat. Which team is going to win? What we do know is that if a team wants to pick up a victory over their other team, they have to hone in on certain keys to victory. Let's start off with the Buffalo Bills. What are the keys to victory if they want a victory over the Kansas City Chiefs? The first key to victory, pressure them to score. I know it sounds crazy. Why would you want to pressure the Kansas City Chiefs to just keep on scoring? Here's the thing. Josh Allen is capable of scoring. We already know that. The Bills offense has a better chance versus the Chiefs defense of excelling than the Chiefs offense has versus the Bills defense. Even though defensively they may look similar, I'd give the edge to the Bills defense just because of the talent that they have and just because how they've looked all season long in comparison to the Chiefs defense. If I had to choose whether to face the Chiefs defense or the Bills defense, I'd rather face the Chiefs defense. I like the odds much better in favor of the Bills offense than the Chiefs offense. The second key to victory, trust the talent in your secondary. Levi Wallace, Jordan Poyer at safety, Tredavious White, we all know how good of a corner he is. Listen, you have some pretty tough wide receivers and receiving options to face. If you want to talk about Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey and the speed that they have on that offense with Miko Hardman on top of that. But you have to look at the secondary and how talented they are in each individual player. Trust the secondary. Let them work their own matchup. Don't let Tyreek Hill break free. That secondary for the Bills needs to step up and have a big game against that Chiefs offense. For the Chiefs, their keys to victory. Number one, pressure Josh Allen up the middle. What does that mean? Uh, Josh Allen's runs are up the middle and dependent on his size. So whether it be goal line carries, whether it be fourth and ones, whether it be third and 12, he has nowhere to go. No one's open down the field. He runs with the ball, and most of the time, he runs with the ball up the middle. If you could put pressure in the middle of that defensive line uh, and pressure that offensive line, meaning the center and the guards, then you can eliminate the center or the middle of the field for Josh Allen to scramble in case no receivers are open and you force him to run outside of the pocket towards the sidelines and that's going to be less yards gained than a bigger run up the middle for Josh Allen. The number two, the key to victory, play more man coverage than zone. This is very important because what the Bills offense, if you've watched them all season long, what they like to do is expose zone coverage. They do it all the time. They get a man like Cole Beasley playing a decoy or John Brown playing a decoy. And that's how Stephon Diggs gets open almost all all the time because the players just shift. And if you just stick with man coverage and you stick with your own man, you're going to avoid a lot of that. And you can limit Stephon Diggs getting open as much as he has all season long. But those are your keys to victory for the Bills and the Chiefs. To wrap up this preview, what we did is we took a poll on Instagram, we asked the Time of Football fans who they thought was going to win this game between the Bills and the Chiefs. And here are the results. Oh, wow. Hold on. That's, uh, that does not sound... That is very, very lopsided. The Bills, 72% of fans believe that the Bills are going to beat the Chiefs. Listen, I'm not questioning whether the Bills are going to beat the Chiefs. I understand that. But 72%... This has to be a little bit lopsided. And looking at the uh, numbers as well, this isn't because only five people voted and then four of them voted for the Chiefs or for the Bills. But we had close to 100 people vote on these Instagram polls and 72% believe that the Bills are going to beat the Chiefs. Listen, that's lopsided. Okay, I understand that. Maybe this is just what people want to see. They want to see the Bills advance to the Super Bowl and have some success given that the lack of success that they've had leave your thoughts and your opinions. Who do you think is going to win? Do you believe this poll to be accurate as far as, yeah, the Bills are the heavy favorites to win this game? Or do you think the Chiefs are actually going to pull this off against the Buffalo Bills? Leave your comments down below and let us know your thoughts. Moving on to the NFC Championship, the Battle of the Bays. 
two quarterback at the tail end of their careers fighting for another Lombardi. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers take on the Green Bay Packers. The Packers have won three of the last four matchups against the Bucs, with the only loss being earlier this season, where the Bucs dominated in a 38-10 victory. Very impressive victory over the New Orleans Saints this past week. We talked about last week how the Bucs failed to have all these impressive victories over these great teams. They would always lose when it came down to it, with the only impressive victory that they had was that 38-10 victory that they had against the Green Bay Packers. But then when they faced the Saints earlier this season, twice, they lost by more than two possessions. They proved everybody wrong, and they finally had an impressive victory outside of that Green Bay game against the New Orleans Saints. Even though this was an impressive victory, I have to preface this. I'm a big Tom Brady fan, okay? So I greatest of all time, I believe. And if you don't believe that, statistically, I don't know what to tell you. You're just emotionally just clouded with your own judgment. You just don't want to see Brady win and you just hate him for some reason because he just he just wins a lot. So just say it how it is. He's the greatest of all time and a very good player given his age at the age of 43. 40 touchdowns this season, fantastic, still can get it done. But if you watch this game against the New Orleans Saints, some of his throws, even though I am a big Tom Brady fan, I have to say like some of these throws were not the best. And that's not at fault of them facing a tough New Orleans Saints defense. But even when the pressure wasn't on him and he had a man open, he did not make the greatest throws. And I'm not sure if that's just a tiny bit of regression given his age, but an example would be that Marcus Williams interception that ended up not being an interception. Because if you look at his stat lines, no interceptions, no turnovers, great job by Tom Brady. But if you look at the at that game and that interception that was called back when Marcus Williams intercepted it, he only got one foot in, barely missed and didn't get two feet in. Brady threw a pass towards Chris Godwin on the sideline in double coverage, which was not the best decision, number one. And number two, overthrew Chris Godwin as well, which led to what could have been an interception. That wasn't tough defense. That was just an overthrow by Tom Brady. And we all make mistakes. I understand. Maybe that was just one of the few mistakes that he made. But he made several mistakes when watching that game. So, you know, I... I, I love Tom Brady, and he's been the main reason why this Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense has been great. This pass offense has been one of the best in the league, but watching that game last week and analyzing every throw that he made, it looked like Tom Brady could be beat, and still very good, and I still believe that he's capable of beating the Green Bay Packers, but if that game last week told me anything, if I saw that game again, saw the passes that he made, I think the Green Bay Packers have a chance, at least, of beating Tom Brady. Let's transition now into the Packers. They might be the best-looking team in the playoffs so far. That's just my opinion. Out of the Final Four, the Packers look like they've made the least amount of mistakes. All the other teams, they've made some mistakes that look like that could be exposed, and the other team, their opponent, could beat them. For the Packers... Not so much. They look solid in the run game. They look solid in the pass game. They look solid on defense. And the Packers might be the most well-rounded team in the playoffs and probably, in my opinion, has the best chance of making the Super Bowl just because of of how well-rounded they are and how little mistakes they make. But let's just break down this matchup between the Bucs and the Packers. Starting off with the pass offense for the Buccaneers, second in the NFL Great offense with Tom Brady and the great set of receivers that they have. For the Packers, 11th in the NFL, but don't be mistaken by those numbers. Aaron Rodgers has been looking fantastic with this connection with Devontae Adams. Rush offense. This is where it's kind of lopsided in the team comparison. Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Bucks are such a pass-heavy offense that Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette don't really get too much love in the run game. 28th in the NFL as far as the rush offense. Compare that to Green Bay, top 10 in the league, led by Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, and now A.J. Dillon in that three-headed monster running back by committee approach that they have. Points per game, second in the NFL for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and first in the NFL for the Green Bay Packers. As a matter of fact, all four teams that are in the NFL playoffs are ranked first, second, the Buffalo Bills are ranked third, and the 
the Chiefs are ranked fifth, so top five, all four teams. Pass defense, if we want to talk about defense now, lopsided as well. We all know about the Buccaneers' secondary the last half of the season has not been looking the greatest. 21st in the NFL, compared that to the Packers, led by Jair Alexander, 7th in the NFL. Rush defense, this is where the Bucs can excel. They can stop the run whenever it matters. The Bucs, first in the NFL, the Packers are 13th, even though they have given up some big plays in that run game. So, a little bit of lopsided stats as far as comparison goes. They each have their own game plans that they operate with, but the Buccaneers, looks like it's a pass-heavy offense, don't really care about the run. The Packers are a more well-balanced attack. Aaron Rodgers can pass it when he needs to pass it, but you can also rely on Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams and A.J. Dillon to get it done in the run game. Let's talk about the quarterbacks. The, the comparison between these two elite quarterbacks, Hall of Fame-worthy, uh, signal callers with Tom Brady. Passing yards, 4,600 compared to Aaron Rodgers, almost 4,300. Pretty similar in that category. Pass touchdowns, Tom Brady 40. Aaron Rodgers led the league with 48. Interceptions, Tom Brady is more prone to turnovers as compared to Aaron Rodgers. As we all know, throughout his whole entire career, Aaron Rodgers has been careful with the ball. 12 interceptions for Tom Brady, 5 for Aaron Rodgers. 65.7% of his cap, uh, his passes completed for Tom Brady. As for Aaron Rodgers, a stellar 70.7%, which has helped the quarterback rating for each of these guys. 102.2 rating for Tom Brady, which is great, but even better for Aaron Rodgers, 121.5 quarterback rating, which is tied for second of all time with Peyton Manning, who he passed in 2011 with 122.5, Aaron Rodgers did, to set the NFL record. So he didn't break his own record. But that's a comparison between each of these two quarterbacks. So talking about these teams, and now that we've analyzed the statistics and the team rankings for each of these squads, as well as look at their quarterbacks, how can each team pick up a victory this weekend? Let's start off with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's look at their keys to victory. For the Bucs, you have to get Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette involved. We talked about the run defense of the Packers. The ranked 13th in the NFL but they've given up some big plays to the running back position all season long. That's when you can get Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette to expose that run defense of the Green Bay Packers. That's going to get uh, a healthy amount of uh, time of possession taken off from the, from the Green Bay Packers on their side of the ball, and Tom Brady and that offense can stay on the field much longer if you involve the running backs. Number two, play Devontae Adams tight. Okay, it's hard to cover Devontae Adams. We've learned this. We even learned this last week with Jalen Ramsey. That touchdown was not Jalen Ramsey's fault. The other defensive back should have shifted and blocked or or guarded Devontae Adams. That wasn't his fault. Ramsey did a very good job, but where Ramsey kind of messed up and that Rams defense kind of messed up is that they kind of played back from Devontae Adams. I understand you don't want him to break free. You don't want him to burn you. You don't want him to get that long touchdown reception. But if you play him tight, you prevent the Packers and the Aaron Rodgers from dumping the ball off quickly to Adams and let him get it get that yards after the catch, which he did so often last week against the Rams. Don't play 5, 10 yards off of him. Instead, kind of play more so 2 or 3 yards close to him. and You can kind of prevent that from happening. For the Packers, what are their keys to victory? Attack that vulnerable secondary. Talked about the last half of the season for the Bucs has not been great. That secondary, uh, pretty much the only bright spot is Antoine Winfield Jr., who's been the rookie. They're solid rookie in that secondary, but they've been exposed. And Aaron Rodgers is the guy to do it. If, if you want to talk about any quarterback that can put up big numbers against the Bucs secondary, it's Aaron Rodgers, the MVP favorite. So attack that vulnerable secondary, just pass the ball all the time. But if you want to run with the ball, you're going to have to take the running back by committee approach. Against the first-ranked rush defense, you have to utilize different running styles. And you have the best, one of the better, uh, or I wouldn't say better, but most diverse running back crew in the NFL. Talk about Aaron Jones. He's more of the shifty back. I would say, in my opinion, the most talented back, and yes, definitely the starter, but he's the more shifty back out of the uh, three running backs that they have. Jamal Williams is more of the power back. Utilize him on third and one, fourth and one, fourth and goal. 
And then A.J. Dillon is kind of a mix of both, a power back and shifty. Hasn't really developed into the best running back in the NFL just because he's still a rookie. But if you want to talk about his size and his athleticism, he's kind of a mix of Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams. Can't be a power back, but can also be shifty when you need him to be shifty. So I would utilize all three of those running backs and their different running styles in that running back by committee approach. But those are your keys to victory for every single one of these teams playing in the NFC Championship. Should be a good game. So who is going to win this matchup? Listen, I don't make predictions. I really don't because I don't want to say, oh, I believe this team is going to win. And then the next week, if they lose, people come at me and uh, just say some mean stuff. But instead of me playing favorites, I decided, why not let you guys play some favorites? I just operated and generated an Instagram poll between the Bucks and the Packers and let you guys decide the time to football fans, the time to fans, the time to followers, the time to faithful. Who do you guys believe is going to win between the Bucks and the Packers? And here are the results. Oh boy, 65% of fans believe that the Packers are going to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is kind of lopsided as well. We looked at the Chiefs and the Bills poll. And it was 72% the Buffalo Bills. This is also lopsided. I don't know whether this is because people believe that the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to lose or they want the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to lose because they don't want to see Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. I have have no idea. I believe that it could be anybody's game and it's more 50-50. But you guys think otherwise. The Packers, 65% of fans believe that they're going to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, ending their hopes of hosting a Super Bowl in their home stadium. But if you guys are watching this podcast and listening as well, leave your comments down below. Let us know who your picks are of winning the NFC Championship. I mean, if these predictions and these polls are correct, then we're going to have the Green Bay Packers versus the Buffalo Bills in Super Bowl 55. Pretty solid matchup. Leave your comments down below and let us know your thoughts. But that'll about do it for this week's episode of Time to Football. I appreciate you guys joining us for the whole entire duration of this show. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel so you guys can stay up to date. We'll come out with more podcasts every single week. Like I said at the top of the show, I'm not sure if I'll come out with a podcast next week. It's all dependent on whether uh, we get clearance or credentials to interview players. If we do have the opportunity to interview the players that are going to be making the Super Bowl, then we're going to instead come out with interviews throughout the whole entire uh two weeks leading up to the Super Bowl. So we'll just go ahead and wait for that and see uh, whether or not we're going to come out with a podcast. But if you guys are listening to us on the go on iTunes, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash time to football. And then also while you're over at iTunes, rate and review the podcast five stars uh, and nothing less. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Conference championship, AFC and NFC championship. Enjoy this weekend and I'll see you next week. We'll be right back. 